So now that we've added the ability to save the high scores within our game, we're now ready to add the functionality to the three remaining buttons on our end screen. And that is the ability to share our game score with our friends, our family, or whoever we want via Twitter or emailing or SMS messaging. Now, all of these services are going to be done by directly uh, from within the application, meaning we don't need to go to actual Twitter itself or go to load up the mail app or the message app. We're going to overlay this and do it directly from within the application. And we're going to first start with sharing on social media site called Twitter. Now, it's very simple and easy process to do. Apple has made this process very, very easy. So providing that your user has signed into their Twitter account from within the settings of their device, is a very simple process. It just links up to their account and shares it to their feed very, very easily. Now, there's going to be cases where maybe your user is not already signed up or signed into Twitter on their device. So we need to check if they are, and if they are, then allow them to do it. If they're not already signed up, then we need to tell them that they need to do so. So the first thing we're going to do then is jump into our interface builder here. I'm going to select our end view here. I'm going to bring up the assistant editor as we need to add in an action for the button itself. So once we press it, we then trigger the sequence to begin to share the content to Twitter. So making sure that we're on the end of viewcontroller.swift within the assistant editor. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom here where we've got a little bit of spacing so we can clearly see what we're placing in. I'm going to select our share Twitter button and either press control and drag or right click and drag the button all the way over, drop it in, make sure we select it as an action and I'm simply going to call it share Twitter and then connect that up and there we go. We've now created a brand new function and action which is now linked to our share Twitter button. So we're already now to start coding it to share our content, in other words, our score. Now before we can go any further, we need to import a framework within our project. Now frameworks give us all the capabilities and quite simply allow us to perform certain actions or certain features uh, a lot easier than we would have to normally do it. A framework has all the capabilities we need and in our case to share to Twitter and all we have to do is reference certain features from it to be able to use it. So I'm going to close our assistant editor and go back to our standard editor. There we go. I'm now going to jump into our project name at the very top here to go back to our overview. Then go to our build phases, and then going to drop down our link binary with libraries, and then go on to press this little plus symbol. What this then does is bring up a huge list of all the possible frameworks that we can use and add within our project. And the one we want to focus on is our social.framework. So select this and add this in, and then appear within our project and within the frameworks folder on our left hand side as well. Now this has all the capabilities to share our content to Twitter and all we have to do like I said before is reference certain features that are able to link to that framework and use all its capabilities. So we're going to jump straight into our end view controller.swift where we now got our action button all set up. We first need to import the framework into this class to basically make this class aware this framework exists and import it so we can then reference it and use all of its capabilities. So we do this by at the top here underneath our import UI kit. We're going to type in import once more and what we're going to import now is our social framework. As simple as that. So now that we've imported our social framework we now can go on to code our button. So I'm going to space it out now so we can clearly see what we are now typing. So before we can have the ability to share to Twitter we need to make sure that our user either is logged in or if they're not. So we need to detect if the ability to share to Twitter is available. Now, if it is available, then we can go ahead, we can load up our Twitter view and then get them to post the content if they're happy with it. If it's not available, we're then gonna simply show up an alert and just tell them that, hey, you're not currently signed into Twitter, so go over to your settings and your device settings and then simply sign in. So. How we do this then is you use a simple SL Compose view controller. This is a view that loads up and it's going to be pre-populated to what we set it to. In our case, the content that was within the application. And we're going to make sure that this uh, Compose view controller is equal to a certain service, which our service is going to be Twitter. 
And as long as we can detect that this service is available, meaning our user is signed in, then we have the green light to go ahead and then simply send that tweet. So within the button, we first start with creating a if statement. So if our SL compose view controller, which is the view that's going to load up for our Twitter, dot is available for service type. Now again, we need to select what service type is available. So we type in SL service type, and we're going to choose Twitter and end that with a bracket. So it's basically saying if this is available, if this service is available, then perform the following action within the two quotation marks. And again, what we want to do is then get this Compose View Controller to load up and then populate it with the content within our application. So what we do then is we're first going to create our constant of our let here. And I'm first going to call it Twitter. And what that's simply going to do then is link to our SL Compose View Controller. And then we're going to make it simply that equal, again, a service type and that service type is going to be Twitter. Now you may be thinking, but we've already done that. Well, we kind of have and we haven't. What we've done first is make sure that it is available. Then we need to create this view that's going to load up to equal it. So we're kind of doing it again in a sense, but the first one detects if it's available. The second one is getting this SL um, Compose View Controller. So we equal it to the SL Compose View Controller. And again, we do our bracket for service type, pretty much what we typed in just up above. And it's our SL service type Twitter and that with a bracket. So now, wherever we reference our constant here of Twitter, it now links to the service type again of Twitter, and that's what we're posting to. So what we can do now is go on to reference it, like I just said, and then we can do dot set initial text. So now when we reference Twitter, this is the view that loads up again to share to Twitter and setting the initial text means that we can pre-populate it with any type of information. Now you can see here we have a text string of the information we're allowed to put in. So if it's anything else like an int or anything like that, you have to do the conversion to what we've previously done within the application. But we can type in all different types of text. We can even type in two quotation marks and do a load of random text, whatever we like. But what we want is to have it pre-populated with our score. So a very simple process to do is type in our score label dot text and then that with a bracket. So it's as simple as that. We've now placed in whatever the text is being displayed within our final score label gets placed within our Twitter view. But that's really all it is. Maybe you want to kind of, kind of customize how it gets displayed. Maybe we want to say, uh, my final score is this. Can you beat me or something like that? So how can we integrate other text that's not within the label? Maybe kind of fill out what we're going to be sharing. Because you also got to think that when you're allowing your users to share content within your application, it's also a free tool. Kind of think of it like free promotion. So at some point, you maybe want to think in how can I allow the user to share this content? And when their friends, family, or anybody sees this content that they're sharing, are able to understand that it's from this application and maybe they want to test it out and play with it. So we could do some cool stuff like maybe integrating with our application link or maybe just generally put the name of the application itself. So we're going to completely change now what the initial text simply does. So let's create our own string that we're going to be placing in. So we could type something out like, my final score was, and then after here, we can then type in or add in the score from our label. So kind of how do we do this? Because this is now a string. How do we add text that's currently outside of a string within it? It's kind of a little bit weird to how we will place it inside. We could you know, write in six and then tell our user they always got six, but how do we make sure that this string is dynamic and it always updates? Well, with strings, we're allowed to place in kind of think of them like short codes, which gives the ability to add in kind of information from other objects. So what we can do is a backslash and two brackets. And inside of the two brackets here, we can then go into reference the object that we want to simply use. So we type in score label dot text. And all we need to do then is leave an exclamation mark at the end for the optional wrap as it converts it over and places it inside of our string. So by closing that up, what that's now doing is saying my final score was colon space, as we got a space here before our label kicks in. Now this whole section here, 
as you can see leading up to the two brackets there, is always going to be changing. Every time we press that Twitter button, it's always going to be changing because our user is always, nine times out of ten, going to have a different score from what they previously got. So this is always updating. It's what makes it very dynamic when we go to share that piece of text. So now that we've set up the piece of text that we want to share, we then need to present this view to our user because we're pre-populating it ready for them to go ahead. Now again, this link you could put at the end here, like space, uh, dash, and then maybe like the application link so other users can download it. It's a great way to kind of, again, use it as a free promotional tool. But anyway, we're going to then present it to our user. So the same way that we almost kind of present new views within our application, we call upon the application itself, and then we do dot present. And then what we need is a simple present with the animated and completion. So we'll scroll down to the bottom now, so animated and completion just here. So what we're going to be presenting is simply our Twitter, which is the constant we created just up above. Uh, animated, we're going to select to true and completion, we're going to leave to nil, don't want to edit or do anything with that. So that's pretty much it for us to allow us to load up the Twitter view and get ready to post this information to our user. Now, as it currently stands, on the simulator, I'm not currently logged into any Twitter account, so this is not going to work. So let's just quickly test it out and to see exactly what happens before we kind of create the um, way of detecting if our user is not logged in. So we just wait for our application to now load up. Okay, and so now it's built in one. We can let our application go through the motions to get all the way to the end screen. Now, I do remember that I'm not currently logged into any Twitter accounts on the current simulator. So uh, by right, when I press the button, nothing should actually happen. So we just wait for the end view now. When I press the share to Twitter button, nothing actually happens because it's detected. It's read the first if statement here for if it's available, then perform this action, which it's currently not available because I'm not logged in. So before we go any further then, let's create the ability to detect if our user's not logged in. If they're not, give them an alert to tell them what they need to do. And then once we've learned about and know how to do that, we'll then go to login and test it out and see actually how it works. So if it's not available then, we create a simple else statement. So every in place within the else statement now is what happens if our user is simply not logged in. And all we want to do is create a simple alert. So an alert is very simple. It's almost as simple or as kind of uh, just like how we created our Twitter sheet to load up. So we create a constant and we simply call it alert. And that is going to simply equal to a UI alert controller. There we go. Now this UI alert controller is going to be pre-populated with its own title, message and style. So kind of like how we can pre-populate our kind of Twitter sheet that we load up, we can kind of do the same with our alert. Now you would have seen alerts in many places before. When it asks you to do something, you get a little message box appears within your application. We're going to give it a simple title. So placing our two quotation marks for our string. I'm just going to call it, call it accounts. And then the message we're going to give is what we need to tell our users they need to do. So we can say something like, please log into your Twitter account within the settings. Something as very simple as that. Now that's the message that's going to appear. So when we go to build and run, you can see exactly where these two um, kind of um, strings appear within the alert. Now we move on to our preferred style. So believe it or not, we can do two different styles within an alert. There's something called what we're going to be using, an alert, and then something else called an action sheet, which is a completely different thing. So we only want to focus on the alert. So we do our UI alert controller style, which is just here. And then what we simply do then is do dot alert as we want to use the alert style. So by changing it to an action sheet, it completely changes how it gets displays and interacts on the screen. So now that we've created and pre-populated the alert uh, that we want to show to our user, we then need to add a button to the alert. Now all this button is going to do, once our user presses it, it's going to dismiss the alert from the view. Now by having this, and the only way to get rid of the alert is manually by pressing the button, we can 100% guarantee that a user has seen this alert and read the message. So we need to call upon our alert that we created in the constant just up above here. And then what we do then is do dot add action. So we're going to be adding an action, again, a button to our alert. Now all we're going to be adding is a UI alert 
action. And we do a bracket here to add in our title because we can also give this its own title, not a message, just a title on its own. And what we're going to simply do is call it or give it a title of OK. So the button's going to simply say OK, we press it, and then it dismisses. So in the style here, what we're going to do is give it a simple UI alert um, action style because it is an action. Not Don't think of it as doing a controller style like we've done before. A UI alert action style. Then we do dot default. So we just give it a default button kind of style. And in the handler here, we're going to set this to nil and then close up our bracket. So once we've done that, then we've added our button to it. Uh, we don't need to give it any actions just by simply adding our first button to our alert. It auto detects it and it will be simply the button that dismisses the alert from the view. We then need to present it to our user. So the same way we presented our Twitter view, we do self dot uh, present. And what we're going to be presenting now is our alert animated. We're going to set this to true as well, creates that nice fade effect. And completion, we end that with a nil and a bracket. So there we go. We've got a couple of warnings here, and that's because oh, I've missed off a bracket at the very end of here. So adding the bracket there closes it all up, and we're pretty much done. So if you missed that there, make sure you got two brackets on the end because it closes up this statement and then this statement just here. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to build and run now. And again, remember, I'm still not logged in my Twitter account on my device. So now this time when I press the button, we're going to be greeted with the alert that we've just created. So we get to start again then. I'm going to let it go through all the motions once more. And then once we've uh, tested it out and made sure that we are getting the alert if we're not logged in, we're going to jump into the settings, log into my Twitter account, and then see how it interacts when we press the button. So just wait for the end screen to now appear. And once I press share to Twitter, I get an alert. So it says account, which is the title, the name that we gave it. And then the message, please log in to your Twitter account within the settings. And then we press OK, and it dismisses it from the view. So all we need to do then is head over to the settings within the simulator. And then what we need to do then is scroll all the way down to once it appears to the Twitter kind of um, section within our settings and then simply log in. So as you can now see, I'm currently logged into my Twitter account. So we're going to jump back to our application. I'm going to restart it. So this time when we play it through, I'm going to give myself some form of score so I can press it. Now I do know that my um, record at the moment is 15. So let's beat it and go all the way to 20. So not only are we going to then share any information, but it's also going to save and update our high score. So when I get to press our share Twitter, now that I'm logged in, you'll see that it's now available and we get a completely different view that now appears. So you see here we've got the ability to go to Twitter, it says my final score was 20 because it's again taking that information from directly from the label. I have the ability to now straightly post that to again Twitter, even choose a location from where I'm posting it from and it also shows me how many characters I have remaining because again as this is Twitter I believe it's 140 characters that you have to post. Uh, I'm not too sure on that but I can go ahead and post or choose to cancel. I'm going to cancel it so I don't post it to my actual Twitter. Cancel it. But that's pretty much how it works. And if I restarted, and let's this time, uh, you can now see that my uh, high score did update. But let's get something completely different. Let's say we only get six this time. So we was nowhere near beating uh, our score whatsoever. But again, this is going to now change what's displayed within our label. So when I go to share via Twitter, it now says six. And there we go. We now have the ability to share to Twitter all set up. So we can now move on into our next coming lectures where we can set up the ability to not only, again, share from Twitter, which we've already done, but via email and SMS. Again, two, two very different ways of sharing content within the application.